You most likely clicked on this video because you'd like to see how to profile some knives. If that's the case, you're in the right place. We're going to start with some 1 16th inch 1084. Here's my designs that I've laid out. These are super rough. And when I walk up to the grinder, I'll go ahead and grind these out and fit them to my hand. There might be subtle changes. This is a rough idea. So let's go ahead and move over to the grinder and get started. First things first, I want it to be known that I am grinding in real time here. I will do both of these knives in a matter of about 3 minutes and 15 seconds. When I first start grinding, I use the entire width of the belt across the back of the knife. And then when I move into this clip area, you'll see that now I transition and I'll only be using the leading edge of the belt. I like to apply pressure with my hand and draw the knife away from that leading edge. If you push into the leading edge, you'll undoubtedly gouge this convex area right here. So you definitely want to give pressure and pull the knife away from your platen when grinding these hollowed out areas. When I flip the knife around and start on the cutting edge, I take a nice deep bite right off the bat and then I start to pivot off my thumb. So I put the thumb in the center and I pivot the blade and that gives me a nice rocking motion. And I think it gives you really good control around this curved area. Now the next thing you see, I'll reach up and I'll adjust the tracking on my belt, pulling the belt over off the side slightly. And I did it because here you can see I'm using the edge of the platen to take a deep bite right into the finger choil area. And then I do the exact same thing I just taught you. I drag the knife across that leading edge to do the entire inside of the handle in one pass. The only thing left to do now is to just go ahead and get the butt end of the knife shaped off. And there you go. There's the first blank. Let's jump in and do the second one. The second one has another complexity. We're going to start with the spine of the knife right here, right up to the front. But I do have a clip on this knife. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't end up liking the clip here in a little while, and I do grind it off before I heat treat the knife. So I'll go ahead and grind the spine of the knife off here, and then I'll grind the clip next. And I'm using most of the belt right here. You can see I'm pushing with my fingers, take a nice deep bite. I do have to keep this cool, and I do like to wear gloves while I'm profiling. It doesn't matter if you even superheat your steel at this point, because I'm going to normalize it before I heat treat it anyway. Here you'll see I use that deep bite and then push my thumb and use the rocking motion to get, create that front curve on the knife. It really does work super slick. You guys should try that, implement it in your own shop. You'll find that profiling knives goes super fast. Now watch how I do the finger choil area here. I come in, I take the deep bite, I follow the edge of the platen right down into the finger hole area. And then I dip back out because this has a slightly different profile. I take a secondary bite, go as deep as I want to, and now I'm going to drag it the full length of that inside curve. When I'm done, I'll pull it out. We'll shape the butt of the knife. And once again, we'll have another knife ready to go. Well, there you have it. Two new knives in 3 minutes and 18 seconds worth of grinding. That's not too shabby if you ask me. That's stock removal at its finest. I am going to go ahead and finish these knives out for you. I'll drill the pin holes, I'll make the handle material, I'll finish the handle scales, and then I'm going to show you what they look like in the end. That way you can see the finished product, and I'm really excited to see what you think about them. Let's get these heat treated. Off to the heat treatment. I'm not going to grind the bevels until after heat treatment because they are super thin. Fancy. First knife in and done. Second knife's coming up to heat. Whoop! Missed the hole. Which one do you want to grind first, A or B? Yeah, me too. We're grinding A. Thanks. Boy, both of these are coming out really nice. I went ahead and ground in my bevels. And now... I'm going to throw them on my hand sanding sled right there, and we're going to get them sanded out. Throw on my man print, my man apron, protects me from getting all dirty. And we just go to town. So these handle materials will be a surprise. I don't want to show you until they're done. Um, if you want to see my handle material videos, you can go down and check out lots of videos about how to apply handle materials, but you won't get to see these until the video ends. 
Well guys, I think these bird and trout knives came out spectacular. I did end up making three of them in this series. I, I do plan on making two other designs that I have in mind, but this will cap off this video. I'm gonna bring you in, I'm gonna show you these three, and I'd really like to get your input on what you would do differently if you were gonna make one of these knives. Tell me if you'd like it longer, shorter, you know, thinner blade, if you like the finger choil or no finger choil, the handle shapes. You guys tell me what you think, and I'll take note of that when I make my next two. And I'll... All right, so we have a long, medium, and small on the long, Man, I just can't express to you how light these are. I mean, these are like these, these are just like featherweight knives. I used a hybrid C-Tech material, which is a honeycomb material, and this is kind of a, a greenish color with an elm burl. Really neat burl. I'm going to bring you up close to show you these also, each one of them. This one right here has a sharpened clip. It has mammoth bark, which is the outer layer of mammoth and a really neat stabilized maple handle with a, a really cool knot that goes right through from one side to the other on the book matched scales. So that one came out really cool. And this one is really neat. I love this knife. I love how it fits in the hand. And this is Fordite. This is a casted Fordite product. Now, before you do anything, you must click the thumbs up. Literally scroll your mouse over and click the thumbs up icon or press it with your finger and then go down to the comment section and tell me which one of these three knives that you like best and why including if you like the handle material the blade shape tell me all about it guys. I personally like this one right here with the mammoth. I think this knife is super classy. It's nice and thin and fast. Really like the knot that goes through from one side to the other on the book match scales and the mammoth just really sets it off. Look at that glass-like shine that the Mammoth gives you. This C-Tech and Elm combination is also super fantastic. I absolutely love this knife. In fact, I can't make up my mind which one I like better. The C-Tech is gorgeous. The Elm Burl really complements it. Kind of gives it this high-tech look. What do you think? And last but not least, we have the Fordite scales. Love this combination. This is a casted Fordite in black resin. Really neat look, but if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. So it kind of sets this knife in a category of its own. If you're interested in more knife making videos, I'll put them right here. Thanks.